Hey, this is Dreams in Action. I am your host, C. Austin Brown. And I want to give a high five, a fist bump, a shout out to all the listeners who are tuned into this motivational channel. Hey, tonight we have a great show tonight. I have an incredible guest tonight. He's going to talk about his business. He's a veteran. And as you know, we always support our veterans, those who serve and those who support the military. And I want to say thank you for your service. You. Hey, tonight's topic is boots to business. I did an interview already. You, you can look on the page where I actually interviewed Jake, the owner, who's also a veteran. He's the owner of this cigar lounge, and he's also been sponsoring since I've started the page here in Colleen. And so tonight's subject is still boots to business as individuals transition out of the military and start at their own business. But I have tonight here, I have Jameson Gilmore with me tonight. He is, has served in the military for eight years. He has had multiple deployments. Uh, three exactly. He's had three deployments to various places in the Middle East, and he's also from Kinnar, Texas. Yes, sir. So he's a Texas man. So I want to say, I hope he's a Dallas Cowboys fan. Only team it is. <laughs> that's it's right. Only team. Hey, man, that's right. Hey, but Jameson, man, welcome to the show. I'm glad you decided to come. I appreciate you coming out tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Yeah, but so tell me how did, so from, from Texas, what was it like growing up in Texas, and who were your early inspirations as you were coming up? Uh, man, I'm from the country, so yeah. you know my inspirations were people that I grew up with. Okay, you know my uh, uncles, uh, other businessmen who own lumber companies in the, uh, yeah. in the country. Okay, driving trucks. So those are the people I looked up to. I didn't have, you know, yeah. too many people from the outside, just right yeah. down the home front. So growing up in the country, I, I just have some. Some memories, man, some old memories of myself. I grew up in Washington, D.C., and I'm not a Skins fan, I'm a Dallas fan. <laughs> okay. Right? But I remember we're going down to the country. My grandfather would take us down uh, during the summertime, you know, and sometimes the winter. You know, we would drive down to North Carolina, and we would wake up early in the mornings and have to go out and perhaps, you know, do some shoveling, you mm -hmm. know, feeding some animals. What was it like for you growing up in the country? So what's that life like? It's peaceful. Yeah, uh, you okay. know, being in the country is peaceful. Yeah, um, you know it's easy to to stay out of trouble. We just right. played basketball. Okay. So you know we focused on basketball. We got our grades, and after that it was hoop. That's all we did. Yeah. So did you have chores or expectations growing up in the country? Uh, did you have animals, raise animals, or anything like that in the country? Well, we didn't uh, raise animals. We didn't. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we had chores. We we had to burn trash. We had no trash pickup. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had to burn trash, uh, you know, motor, motor big yard, mm. uh, you know, just stuff that you really don't do in the city. Yeah. You know, we played outside from, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have street lights or anything mm. like that. Yeah. We just played till it got dark until you couldn't see no more. Yeah, those were some good days. <laughs> yeah, man, I remember those were some good days, you know, growing yeah. up. You played all day. You rode a bike all day. You mm -hmm. came in. I mean, you know, in the city, we had to, you know, sometimes be back on the block before the street lights came on. Yeah, we didn't have that know. problem. Yeah, so you just out. Mm -hmm. So did you grow up with, with, with siblings, brothers, and sisters? Where yeah. Where you fit in? I grew up with uh, two brothers. With my mom, I'm the middle child. Okay. I have an older brother and okay. a younger brother. All right. What was the expectation like uh, as the middle child? Sometimes the middle child can be lost. You know, the older child get all of his, sometimes get all the responsibilities, he's the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And then the young child, again, get that special attention because that's the young, that's the baby. So being the middle child, what was it like for you? Uh, I was laid back, man. I was laid back. I didn't get in trouble. My older brother was mm -hmm. the one that got in trouble. He was exactly. loud. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? He was loud. Uh, the baby boy, he was, you know, mama's, mama spoiled him, so yeah. he got whatever he wanted. Yeah. So me and my older brother, we was close. Close in age, so me and him was pretty much doing the same thing. Okay, so okay. He just got in trouble for it. I did. I, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what 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 inspired you though. So as you were coming up, did you have family members who also served? And then you mentioned that you saw a lot of your family members working hard, mm -hmm. hardworking truck drivers, working on the farm, or just doing things, laboring uh, jobs. So what inspired you? to join the military. Do you come from a family? Yeah, you, know, you, uh, the military? you know, the military is really, real deep in our family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had uncles that joined the army. Matter of fact, my dad uh, joined the military too. Okay. Yeah, he was a tanker. Wow. So, 
where we from, like I said, it's the country. It's on the mm -hmm. military or yeah. go work in the woods. I got you. I ain't yeah. really want to go work in the woods. So, you know, my brother, he was in the military, so he pretty much led the way for that. Okay. And I followed his footsteps. Now, your dad, now your dad was a tanker. Wow. So, did your dad get a chance to retire? That had, what was that? Did what was that like life like for your dad being a tanker? So, he's probably in his 60s or so now, uh, maybe even older, perhaps. What was that like? Did he ever discuss his time as a tanker? Well, uh, my biological father, he was yeah. a tanker. Uh, okay. No. Okay. Like, I really haven't even spoke to him about it too much. Mm -hmm. But my fa the father that raised me, he was, yeah. a, he was a truck driver. Okay. So that's where I got the hard work uh, hard yeah. working from. Yeah, so those you, you watch these men work hard. Yeah. And just even listen to the history of your dad being in the military as a tanker, that's a hard life by itself. Mm -hmm. You know, having to... You know, ex experience that, and probably during the time when he went in, what was it? Probably during early Vietnam or yeah. Okay, so that's a definitely life. Did he get a chance to go to Vietnam? Was he deployed uh, to Vietnam? Do you know? No, nah, I don't know. I ain't even had. Okay, okay. And then watching your your your, your stepdad, mm -hmm. you know, working hard as a truck driver. So what inspired? So you said your brother went first. Yeah. Okay. So how much older is your brother to you? Uh, like a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. So, did he come home and show those dress blues or dress greens? And yeah. You were oh, yeah. inspired. He did probably, you know, look stronger, look bigger from doing all the push-ups and sit-ups. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, he, he had lost a lot of weight when he went yeah. in. So, wow. yeah. So, when we went to basic training and saw him, yeah. you know, we was proud of him. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that's hard work to lose all that weight. You got to yeah. be dedicated wow. and actually make it through it. Uh, basic training. So, you know, yeah. once he did that, I was like, okay. He was telling me all the good things about mm -hmm. him and the benefits of it. Yeah, so, absolutely. I, was, I pretty much stepped in my junior year. I got you. So seeing your brother, you know, come back, you seeing him strong, you see the discipline, you see the hard work that he had. The military can in, in, inspire a lot of people, man. It yep. definitely impacts, and especially if you take advantage of some of the benefits that's there too, you can value a lot. You can gain a lot from the leadership, experience, traveling, and just have an opportunity to grow and develop. So when you chose to go in, now what, what what job did your brother hold? What was his he position? Was, he was a uh, twenty five Lima. He and was a cable dog. Oh, that's it. Let's break uh, that tele, down. He was a telephone guy. Okay. Oh, yeah, he was a yeah. telephone guy. Wow. Wow, your song jumped in my head. Mr. <laughs> telephone, man. Yeah, he was Something a telephone wrong with guy. my life. Right, right. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, man. I'd be losing focus. So yeah, so 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 you decided to follow in that footstep in his footsteps and, and join. So what was that like for you when you went in? What were your experiences? Uh, you know, when I first joined, I didn't know yeah. what to experience. I just yeah. knew that I wanted to do something with computers and technology. Yeah. So that's why I picked to be a, a signal support system specialist yeah. in 25 uniform to deal okay. with computers and telephones yeah. and things of that nature. But let's go all the way back before we okay. go to the job, man, because you had boot camp first. Yeah. So some of them may not know that you had boot camp first and you have to pass. Everybody doesn't mm. pass. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. some folk may go home yeah. as, as shave head, yeah. ball head. You didn't make it, uh -huh. right? So you got to go home and just walk the walk, right? Of the, the return. Mm -hmm. So what, on those yellow footprints, right? Getting off that bus <laughs> and and getting introduced to your new family oh, of of black hat and brown hat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that newfound family yeah. that welcomed you to, to their home. Yeah. What was that like, you know, that initial, you know, man. for walking on the bus, man? What was that like? Man, you know, you scared because you don't yeah. know what to yeah. expect. You don't right. know what to expect when you're going, when, yeah. you, uh, yeah. when you're living that life. You yeah. just hear those stories. Yeah. But, you know, once you're on that bus and you're holding your, du mm -hmm. holding your duffel bag, once sure. you get out, yeah. and everybody just running trying to find get mm -hmm. their duffel bag and line up, yeah. Yeah. it's like, okay, well, what, yeah. what, did I, what the hell did I get myself into? Yeah. You know, did, you can't turn back. Right. Did the drill instructors find a home with you? You know, now I wanted to say, because I'm 6'8", right? When yeah. I was in the Marine Corps, I stood out. I'm enlisted in Marines. I'm six foot eight. Mm -hmm. you know, little thin guy, skinny. So, of course... Guess who they come to? <laughs> Two on this, one on this ear, one on this ear, one in my face. Right. So it was something special. What yeah. was it like for you when they they saw you? Man, I yeah. had, I, it was this one drill sergeant that the guy always gave me a yeah. hard time because he was yeah. from the country too. His okay. name was uh, Drill Sergeant Hardgrove. You, Hardgrove. Hardgrove. Drill Sergeant Hardgrove. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, so he, he gonna make it hard. Yeah, he, yeah. he did, man. And yeah. 
you know, I was one of the, uh, I was outspoken and, yeah. you know, I was a short yeah. guy, but I was stocky. Yeah. I wasn't for to let nobody run over me. I got you. You I know, you. so he, he peeped it. So mm-hmm. he always had me in control of stuff. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I want individuals to hear this. So coming in the military, mm-hmm. immediately, even going through basic boot camp, you have an opportunity to begin to develop leadership conditioning. Right. Right. right? And... Uh, Depending upon where an individual has come from, sometimes they come in already with a measure of grit. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember watching the movie A Few Good Men, right? Not A Few Good Men, but um, An Office and a Gentleman. Okay. When Lou Gossip was playing the role of the drill instructor and he was like, I want you to quit, I want you to quit. Mm-hmm. And he broke and he said, I have no place else to go. Right. So sometimes a person come in with a, a certain measure of grit mm-hmm. that doesn't matter what you say to me. I'm not going, you're not going to break me. Right. You know, there's some breaking, of course, you break the, the, the civilian side and build them up to working together as a team, but it comes with a certain grit. Do you think you came in with a certain measure of grit to say, I got this? Yeah, I believe, yeah. I believe so, because I mean, like, yeah. when, when you're from the country, you got to get it out the mud, sure, literally. Sure, yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Literally, yeah, yeah, you, man. You got yeah. to. You, you have to be tough. Yeah. I mean, you know, we was uh, I, like our basketball coach used to have us mm-hmm. bailing hay. Bailing hay. You know what I'm saying? Break that down for yeah. the folks who don't know <laughs> bailing hay. You because said, you got uh, the city folk watching. They don't want to say with the bailing hay. Yeah, we just used to break that down. Like the basketball team would yeah. do that for extra money sometimes because right, right. he had cows and everything. Yeah. So. You know, right. we'll be out there picking up square bales, throwing them on right. back of trucks, right. and they like 75, 80 pounds. Yeah. And we, you know, we had to fill up a big barn. So, right. I mean, right. like, yeah. nothing in the military could, could break me. Like, I can't be broke. Yeah, I it's, got it's you. a mental thing. Yeah. So, now being in, you got this drill instructor, yeah. you know, uh, stash on hard growth. What is it? Yeah, drill on hard growth. Yeah, drill on hard growth. Yeah. And hopefully, he get to watch this. Drill on hard growth saw something in you. He connected with you from the country. He's from the country, but yeah. he also saw some traits in you as well to mm-hmm. say, "Hey, I'm gonna go after that." What was it like for you when he kind of took you under your wing, under his wing, to, to push you? Uh, man, you know, like when he when he did that, I saw the position that he had. He was the head drill, drill yeah. uh, sergeant instructor. Yeah. So it's like they just motivated me to like mm-hmm. become the best person that I am. Yeah. And, you know, I never quit. Just keep keep yeah. focusing and driving on. So that's good. That's that's what he did to me. That's good. Now, did you graduate as one of the the guide or one of the uh, platoon leaders? Or? Yeah. That's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. That's that's good stuff. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> that's good stuff, man. <laughs> so so graduating from from boot camp. What year What year did you graduate? That was uh oh three. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now, Four so pages. now, those who don't understand, you graduate uh, basic training. Mm-hmm. You know, as as a platoon leader. Now, that's that's a great position. You know, can you explain to them who may not know in terms of being a platoon leader some of the responsibilities that you had? You know, with all those other young, you know, recruits mm-hmm. trying to become part of our family. Right. You know, like when you're a platoon leader, you pretty much have to oversee everybody that's in your platoon. Mm-hmm. And everything goes up the chain and goes directly to you. Yeah. You know what good. I'm saying? So it's like you you managing everybody that's mm-hmm. under you. Yeah. So it just puts you in that good leadership role. Yeah, that's that's great, man. Um, that, that, that That's remarkable. Mm-hmm. So you graduate boot camp. Now you go to your specialty or the job that you're going to do for the Army. Right. And so, and what what is that job? You said 20... 20 25 uniform yeah, so, uh, signal support system specialist. Yeah, so signal support. So what exactly is a signal support specialist? Uh, what sig- is it a signal support system specialist is pretty much anything dealing with technology or mm-hmm. radios, telephones. Okay. They want you to fix it. They expect right, you to right. fix it. Expect if you, you. If you don't know it, you got yeah, to learn how to do it. You got to learn how to do it. You got to learn how to do it. Yeah, so, so that, that communication is important. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely, you know, now we've been, you've been to the war several times as well. How important is being able to fix those radios or being able to have comms or communication, it's especially very, on the battlefield? It's very important because without communications, you're dead, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you can't do anything without communications. You can't mm-hmm. go outside the gate if you, uh, if you lose communication while you're out there. Everything comes to a screeching halt. Mm-hmm. And you got to get comms back up because yeah. that's your lifeline. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. Can you imagine being under fire and not being able to communicate, shoot, move, and communicate? Can right. you imagine that? Yeah, you know, I've been yeah. in. Yeah. Oh, okay. What was I've that like? So, Scared. So, That's okay. what it's like. So were you all taking fire at the time? Right. Or yeah. did comms go out? 
Yeah, we okay. had to get it back up. You shut the comms down, and so you're going under fire. Mm -hmm. How do you think the training prepared you, you know, for that moment where now you're in combat already, and so now communications are down, and you're in war, and you're taking fire. So now this is this is serious now. Mm -hmm. You know, lives lost right. or have the potential of being lost. What was what was that moment like? Did you remember? Yeah, I mean, you know, it just everything leads up to that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, all the training, all the uh, uh, field exercises, yeah. everything leads up to that point. Yeah. So it's like, okay, hey, this is what we trained you for. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for it? Absolutely. So basically, it's either shit or get off the pot. Absolutely. So that's right. You know, with those situations like that, you just have to pretty much black out. Yeah. You got to black out and just go back into your instincts and just yeah. do your job. Yeah, remember your training. Yeah, because once yeah. you do that, you good. Yeah, yeah. You remember another movie? There's yeah. another, remember another movie? Um, they were pilots. I can't remember the name of the movie. You may, you may come to you. But um, God, Gene Hackman is on the ship and his guys were taking fire and the ship was, you know, one of the planes was shot down. And he was on the radio, he had comms, he had to go get comms mm -hmm. and get comms working. And he calls in and said, hey, they shot him, they took him, they took him. And he is, is spazzing out and he says his name over the radio. And Jay Hackman says, not over the radio. And yeah. then he says to him, he says, uh, remember your training, remember your training, yeah. get hired, Do, use what you have to do what's necessary and we will pick you up. Mm -hmm. I promise we will pick you up. So that training, you now the fire, the, the stuff has hit the fan. Mm -hmm. You taking fire and you block out. You have to just rely on that training. Right. And so, as as he said that, uh, I want to pause and say this. I, again, I appreciate those who serve. It's less, literally, less than one percent of those who are willing to go through the training to raise their hand to serve in, in any of the branches of the military. Mm -hmm. That's the 1% of the 300 plus million people we have in, in America. And so again, I applaud those who serve and those who are being deployed or have been deployed and training now for different types of operations. So you, you're in that, in that fight, man. Do you remember those moments? Because it seemed like it lasts forever. Yeah. Uh you know, it was a lot of return gunfire. Mm -hmm. We were taking gunfire and uh, yeah. returned it as well. But, you know, luckily everybody made it home safe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's always good to come home. You know, um, how many funerals and memorials that we have right. attended, right. Right. you know, for those who we have lost. And, you know, and to the families out there, moms, dads, families, those who have lost loved ones, you know, mm -hmm. our heart, you know, go out to you. And, you know, uh, words can never replace um, those who, who we have lost. So, yeah, again, man, I appreciate your service. Oh, yeah, no problem. So, so tell me, so eight years in, mm -hmm. did you ever think that you would stay 20? What, what, what prepared you to make the transition out? Did you ever think about staying for 20? No. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell me, no. did, that, did, that, did that transition happen after the several deployments, the, the third one? And yeah. then you start thinking, you know what, maybe I should just do something different. Yeah, because I, yeah. you know, the, the first two came up quick. Yeah. The first two came up yeah. quick. And then uh, my seventh year, I was getting ready, we was getting ready to deploy again. And I was again. like, nah. Yeah. Like, that'll be, like, you know what I'm saying? That'll be four. Well, I, no, after the third one, we was coming back. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready to deploy again. I was like, nah, I'm getting Yeah, out. I got you. So I, I was you. like four and eight and a half years. So yeah, I was like, nah, I got nah. you. I didn't want to keep have, pushing, them, pushing my luck. Yeah, did, did, wow. yeah. Did you have a family, a wife, and kids home at the time? No, no. Okay, okay. So, so, as you were transitioning out, mm -hmm. what were some of the things, the steps that you started doing to prepare yourself to make the transition? Uh, to get out of the military, mm -hmm. um, you know, A cap. Okay. Going A cap, getting a resume. Mean, I mean, emotionally, not not just. Oh, emotion. that, those are the basic things. That people do a capping, okay. a capping meaning that they go through a week training, setting up resumes and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying making the emotional transition, and what I mean by that, sometimes, you know, we can become. Uh, I don't want to say call it the golden handcuffs. It's not. Certainly, serving in the military is is a take a special group of people right. to even just to do it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we can become um, institutionalized or that come. Yeah, institutionalized 
the camaraderie we yeah. share with each other. Yeah. You know, embracing the suck with each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that people that you meet, man, it's a band. It yeah. literally is a band of brotherhood. It is. It so is. to leave that, did you feel some kind of way to say, man, I'm I'll, I don't know, you know, hesitant to say I don't know. Honestly, yeah, yeah. it's um, excuse me, um, getting out. Yeah. The thing I, I get asked all the time, do I miss the military? Yeah. My answer is no. I don't yeah. miss the military. Yeah. I miss the friends and the family that yeah. I that I made yeah. while in the military. Yeah, I miss seeing those yeah. guys and those girls every day, you know, yeah. going to the field, stuff yeah. like that. That's that's what I miss. Absolutely. Waking up in the morning doing PT, going to the field, deploying. No, I don't I miss you. that. I got you. But you know, you, you miss the friendships and uh friendships yeah. that you that you make in the military. Man, those sure. friendships are lifelong. Oh yeah. Definitely. I mean, just they experience some of the pain and and some of the hardships. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and to be able to relate to somebody, to talk with someone who you can connect with, you don't have yeah. to. You, yeah, you, you don't have to give the whole story. Yeah. They can just look at exactly. them. Exactly. Like, yeah. But yeah. hey, I, we've been there. I exactly. Know. Yeah, right, yeah. right. You exactly. know, and everybody pops Ranger Candy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but those who don't know Ranger yeah. Candy, I mean, that's that ibuprofen 800. That's yeah, good stuff. Exactly. Now you just be popping them like candy because your body is so beat up. Yeah. You but know? getting out, you know, getting out yeah. is a scary transition. It is. For, yeah. uh, for anybody, especially Absolutely. if you don't have a plan. Yeah. You know, like, honestly, I didn't even have a plan when I got out. I just knew that I was going to go to school. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I ain't want to deploy no more. So I, I, I just knew that I was going to figure it out mm -hmm. some way yeah and that's what I did what was that like so it, it is for those who have spent years in perhaps now trying to transition it's it's a scary moment mm -hmm. sometimes it can cause discord with families sometimes it can cause discord with yourself you know and we can try to self-sabotage so how would you um, encourage individuals who are thinking about transitioning doing something different how would you encourage them to do certain things to set them up for success? First, I would I would ask them, what's their plan? Like, right. what's their end game? What do yeah. they see themselves doing outside the military? Yeah. What do they like to do? Do they want to go to school? Do mm -hmm. they want to run a trade? Because just getting out to get out, sure. that's stupid. Absolutely. You know, of, of course you think, hey, I'm tired of, you know, doing PT, mm -hmm. deploying and stuff like that. But if you don't have a plan, you go fail. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's with anything. So it is, it's a big thing, especially being in the military, mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah. Because that's a big transition from getting that steady yeah. check to not getting nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So absolutely. You got to have Medical a plan. benefits, all of those things. Yeah. So having a plan. So it sounded like you had a plan. And that's what I want to, you know, talk about mm -hmm. is what you do now. Okay. So you segued out of the military, scary moment, didn't have a plan, but you knew you wanted to go to school. So what did you go to school for? Uh, I went to school for information technology, so okay. I have a Bachelor okay. of Science in Information Technology, I and I have an MBA in Healthcare Management. Nice. That's so awesome. So I, I figured, hey, if I, don't, if I don't make it in IT, I can make it in healthcare, sort of, right. you know, double-edged sword. Yeah, absolutely. So both, I mean, you did your best. And I want to say, how does the military set you up for those particular benefits? To be able to get the degree, the bachelor's and also the master's degree as well. It's good. They pay for it. They pay for it. They pay for it. Absolutely. <laughs> and those but you got to pass. You, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to pass. You got to pass. Well, you know what? In the undergraduate, if you get a C, C is passing. Yeah, you know, you know what sure. they call a lawyer who graduates? You know, exactly. <laughs> the doctor who graduated, the doctor. Yeah. So, so you graduated, you finished. Yeah. And so the military, those who are in, they get to use the benefits of of the tuition assistance, mm -hmm. you know, for the bachelor's degree and also the master's degree for those who want, in addition to if they want a certificate, certification or something. Mm -hmm. But then as you got out, what benefits did you use when you transitioned out? Uh, the benefits I used when I got out. Did you, did you use the GI Bill? Yeah, I used the GI Bill. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so now you have the MBA, you mm -hmm. have your bachelor's degree as well. But you also transitioned into another business, man, that's really successful. We mm -hmm. had an opportunity to talk about it, yeah. <laughs> you know, which I yeah. was inspired by. It. So you're actually doing uh, real estate now. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Tell in terms of your real estate career now. Okay, uh, I started, started learning real estate. I didn't know how I wanted yeah. to get into real yeah. estate. I just knew I wanted to own some real estate and, yeah. and get into it because a long time ago I wanted to be a real estate agent. I got you. But things changed and I didn't want to be a real estate agent. So right. 
Uh, about two two and a half years ago, I got online, got on Google, just like everybody else. Right. If you want to learn right. something, get on Google. On Google. Good yeah. on Google. So I got on Google and wanted to find out how can I get into real estate wow. with no money. Wow. And I came across wholesaling. Wow, okay. Came across real estate wholesaling yeah. and watched YouTube, binge watched YouTube wow. for like 30 days. Wow. And uh, wow. yeah, I actually had a full-time job. Okay. So I had a full-time job and I was uh, binge watching YouTube. Yeah, I didn't day, wow. even at work. So, so you learn how to get in. So, so you're an investor now. Yeah. So you're actually as an investor buying wholesale investing properties and everything, mm -hmm. which you learn just by binge watching on yeah. YouTube. <laughs> yep. See, is that not Perfect. is that not determination, grit? Mm -hmm. You know, just making something happen, watching YouTube. So, yeah. how, tell me, how did you do it with no money down? Uh, well, how I did it is what we call driving for dollars. And driving okay. for dollars is when you pretty much put gas in your car, yeah. you drive through neighborhoods yeah. and look for distressed properties, vacant okay. or distressed properties. Okay, and then once you do that, then mm -hmm. what? So you find a property that's distressed. Yeah. Somebody living in it or somebody no. is designed Somebody could be living in it or right. nobody's living in it. it could be okay. vacant. And so from that, you, you do what? From that, you can write that address down. Mm-hmm. Go back to Google mm -hmm. and put in whatever county that you're in. Mm -hmm. So we're in Bell County right now. Yeah. So I can go on Google and put in Bell CAD property search. Mm -hmm. Yeah. CAD, which means County Appraisal yeah. District. Yeah. Property search. Wow. And I can find out who owned that piece of property. Okay. And then once you find out who owns it, mm -hmm. then you call them or what's yes. the next step? So once I find out who owns that piece of property, mm -hmm. uh, we do what we call skip trace in the real estate world. Okay. And that's when you get online, True People Search or Fast People mm -hmm. Search or WhitePages.com mm -hmm. and find phone numbers associated to that uh, property or that oh. homeowner. Okay. And then you call. Okay. And then once you call them and you make a deal, you, hey, let's make a deal. Yeah. So okay. you call and you, you make a deal on their property. Sure. And see how much they, they want for it or what they'll take for it. Okay. And then we put it on paper. We put it under contract for a certain price. That's awesome. Yeah. How did you collect? So wholesaling then. Do you put certain properties in a bundle and then you sell that to a, a, another investor? You can it? you can if that homeowner has multiple uh, properties. Okay. You can wholesale how many properties they they looking to sell. Yeah. So once you put that property under contract, of course you'll take that uh, contract to a title comp to a reputable title company okay. that's dealing with wholesalers okay. or investors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know we had a property under contract for a certain price. Okay which in that contract it states and or signs mm -hmm. that means we can market our equitable rights wow. to that property to another investor wow. who's looking to pay more for that property that's incredible and you make the yeah. difference you make the and spread. all of this you learned on google yeah on google. that's incredible yeah and i want to encourage people i mean because you know I, there are some people now that's wondering what their purpose is mm -hmm. you know trying to find out what's next for them you know um you know you know trying to find, hey, what am I going to do with my life? And you learn how to do a lot of this stuff just by taking a drive and, you know, with Google yeah. and learning some things and just stepping out, mm -hmm. you know. How was that, what was that like for you initially? Overcoming the fears, overcoming the nervousness and overcoming to say, hey, I need to make this work. Uh, the hardest thing was, was really talking to people, talking to people on the phone because yeah. I didn't really know exactly sure. what you know what the outcome was going to yeah. be i just knew the process i got you so you know just like anything just like riding a bike you got to yeah. do it a few times to really like, get it yeah i like that concept so you know yeah. once i once yeah. i did and made yeah. a few calls got cussed out a few times after that it's like okay well, what else yeah. can happen yeah. besides getting cussed out right you've been shot at already yeah exactly you've been so, deployed a few times yeah you know, somebody picking up the phone exactly. yelling at you cussing you yeah, over exactly. i mean come on <laughs> come on that's like butter on pancakes yep that's right. That's it. That's right. With some maple syrup too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, it. Yeah. So, but I want to. Uh, uh, how do people contact you? Because you may be looking for partners, mm -hmm. doing some collaboration. Can you tell yeah. the people, you know, um, your 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 phone number or your web page, or how can people contact you? to learn from you, but also perhaps they collaborate with you. Right, well, I ain't gonna give them a phone number. Okay, perfect. all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, but if you, sure, wanna, sure. Uh, if you wanna contact me and learn uh, real estate wholesaling, real estate investing, creative finance, you can follow me on Instagram, T-H-A-R-E-I-D-E-A-L-E-R, okay. uh, -E 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 the REI dealer, or you can visit uh, the website, achievementhomebuyers.com, 
Or find me on Facebook, Jameson Gilmore. Okay, Jameson Gilmore. Yeah. And the Jameson, let me just spell out his name too. Jameson is J A M I E S O N space Gilmore. G I L M O R E. Jameson Gilmore. You can partner him, tag him on Facebook. Definitely learn how to do creative financing, mm -hmm. collaboration, or just even wanted to ask some questions of how he started. So far, we learned just through Google. Yeah. You know, so if you really want something, you have to just go after it. If Indeed. you were to say just one thing, um, how you want to be remembered, you know, how do you want to be remembered? Ugh. Motivating. Motivating. Yeah, motivating yeah. and determined. Motivating and yeah. determined. That's it. Yeah. That's a never quit, never give up attitude. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing tonight, man. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely.